welcome our next headlight talk speaker. I am Khushi. I am currently a product designer at Red Hat. And today I am going to talk about open source and accessibility. So I think open source is a very uh, important sector which is currently unexplored by designers. So that is what I am going to talk about. Let's get started. So what exactly is open source? So any software or asset which is publicly available for you to use, view, modify, contribute to is known as open source. And in design particularly, this could be your design systems, UI kits, or even proper design processes. So why should we as designers think about open source or embrace open source? Collaboration and community. So when you work with a diverse team, global teams, uh, it gives you a lot of exposure, it gives you an opportunity to collaborate and contribute to the community. Designing with transparency, so in open source you are doing everything in public, you are going to be getting feedback in public and you know sharing your ideas in public, so there's a lot of transparency there, which I think is very important. Next would be impact and inclusivity. So when you work at a single company, you can have limited impact. A greater one for sure, but still limited. But in open source, you can be contributing to multiple projects at the same time. You could contribute to a company which you don't even work at. So I feel the impact is tremendous. Um, next uh, would be portfolio and your personal growth. So especially as newbies in the design field, uh, I feel open source is a great place to start. Uh, you might not always find opportunities, but open source is very welcoming. It is very um, like entry level friendly. So you can definitely improve your portfolio uh, by contributing to open source. Okay. So what kind of contributions can be done? So I feel almost all kinds of designers can contribute to open source. So you can contribute by designing logos, icons, illustrations, proper like UI, UX design, website design, mobile design, even branding and contributing to design systems. Design systems I feel is very, um, uh, again, a huge part and very important part of any organization. So for example, we at Red Hat, we use uh, Patternfly which is our open source design system. Okay, so what challenges uh, can you expect to face and how to overcome them? So uh, first would be lack of communication and ownership. So since uh, in open source, uh, you would expect people from different countries, different time zones, uh, you know, collaborating, they might not do that as their full-time job also. So you might um, face issues in communication and getting ownership, getting feedback. So all you can do there is just uh, be proactive and being patient. Uh, next would be lack of resources. So open source projects don't always get enough funding. They don't have enough funds. So what you can do there is just be creative and resourceful. Try to use some uh, free and open source uh, software or tools out there. Some of them have been mentioned here. So Material IO is one by uh, Google, design system by Google. Then you have the community tab of Figma itself, which is great for resources also. Uh, how can you get started? So I'm not sure how many of you are aware of GitHub, but GitHub is uh, basically a version control which software developers use. But you can also use it as a designer to contribute. So you can uh, learn the very basics of GitHub and get started. So you can start by searching for certain keywords like uh, design, logo, UI, UX, or any, anything else that you think you can contribute to. And what it will lead to is you will get a list of uh, issues, repositories where you can help or you might want to help and then you can proceed from there. You can uh, study about the project and contribute to it. 
Uh, another one is this community called opensourcedesign.net. I've added a screenshot. So what this uh, website does is basically they have a list of uh, resources. They have uh, articles, collected issues, events happening uh, to, uh, to promote open source and uh, design. Uh, what are the opportunities? So these are some of the opportunities. These are some um, open source programs which mainly do consist of uh, software related projects, but they do also have uh, design related projects. So Outreachy is one, then there's GSOC, Google Summer of Code, and there's also Hacktoberfest. So Outreachy was the one that I was a part of uh, two years ago. I worked as an intern with an open source uh, community and worked on their uh, mobile app. And Hacktoberfest uh, happens in the month of October. So if anybody wants to get uh, started with open source and design, they can uh, register for Hacktoberfest. Okay, some bonus tips. Uh, make sure your work is high quality, still, uh, like, even if you feel you are working for free here. Uh, make your work easy to use. Uh, make sure to also document your work and process, because especially in open source, there's um, there's lack of guidelines, so nobody will act actually tell you to document your work and process, but it is very important because people after you will be using the design, uh, contributing to it further, with, so you, sh uh, you should make sure to make it easy for them to understand and uh, contribute to it uh, further. And don't forget to promote your work. Uh, this can help you in two ways. The project also gets uh, some visibility and you yourself uh, can add it to your portfolio and uh, promote it. Okay, now let's move on to accessibility. Okay, so accessibility, you would uh, often see it written it like this. So it can be pronounced as A11Y, A11Y or ally, or you can just call it accessibility. So why is uh, accessibility important? What is accessibility? So creating products which can be used by everyone in spite of their abilities or disabilities is accessibility. and Based on our WHO uh, report, you would be excluding about 15% of the entire world's population if you do not make an effort to uh, make your design accessible. So accessibility shouldn't be an afterthought that once you've designed, then you uh, think about it. It should be a core uh, design principle. Uh, then the, uh, th this, uh, these are just some examples of some disabilities that your potential users might have. Let's also discuss some practical examples now. Uh, so poor contrast, uh, a good text to background contrast ratio is very important. Uh, so on the right, this screenshot is, uh, is, is from a website which helps you do that. So you can enter the foreground and background hex codes and it will give you a contrast ratio which should be ideally 4.5 is to 1. So you can accordingly adjust the color codes in your design. Uh, next is uh, alt text. Uh, alt text uh, is again very useful in multiple ways. First is for screen readers. So visually impaired users often use screen readers to, to scan a website or some content. It is if you do not have alt text there, they would not understand the context of the image. Also, uh, slow internet is, I think, uh, something everybody would have, uh, everybody would have faced uh, sometime or the other. So, um, uh, even for uh, slow internet, sometimes the images don't load and you just don't understand the context of the image. So, uh, make sure you add alt text to your designs and uh, keep it short and crisp. A uh, careful color selection is again very important. Uh, relying on colors alone to convey uh, to convey a certain uh, emotion, to convey a certain state of a design is not the best practice. Make sure you also label your design, your buttons, your error states correctly. Some more examples is uh, also think about forms. So screen readers 
often do not handle forms very well. So make sure you have uh, proper descriptions and labels for your forms. Uh, next would be uh, validating your markup. So, um, so this is a step forward, but once your design gets converted to code, once it is out there, different browsers may read it differently. So again, you or your entire team with your developers, it is your responsibility to also check how every single browser is reading that code and make sure it is a good experience for everybody. Offer transcriptions for audio resources and uh, subtitles and captions for videos. Also try to make the con content as easily understandable as possible. Use simpler languages. Use simpler language to reach more people. And uh, last one is something I don't think we think about, but try using your design without a mouse. So your design should ideally be very easily uh, navigatable to uh, just using a keyboard. <clears throat> Some tips to avoid these barriers. So uh, use uh, WCAG guidelines. Uh, these are guidelines that provide a baseline for you to make your content uh, accessible. And um, yeah, ensure your design meets at least double uh, A standards. So in WCAG, there are three levels. It's A, double A, and triple A. So A is considered as the bare minimum that you should be doing without a thought. Double A is considered good enough, and then triple A is considered like the best uh, standard for accessibility. So make sure your design is uh, design meets at least the double A standards. And there are some tools to test uh, accessibility while you are working on it. So first is Axe. So this is a browser uh, browser extension which you can use once your design is developed. You can use it to check the website. And another is Stark, which is a Figma plugin, which you can use inside your Figma file, inside your design while you are actually designing to check for uh, any contrast issues, any accessibility issues. And another great tip is to try to include uh, users who have disabilities in your, uh, in your testing process, in your research process to identify the issues. What do you need to know as a designer? So often when uh, I talk about accessibility, designers feel that they, uh, due, uh, due to these constraints, they are being uh, you know, forced to make something that is ugly, boring, or cluttered. So, uh, but trust me, uh, it just uh, introduces a set of constraints which, which only makes it better and helps you think about everyone and it leads to better products for all of your users. Also, in many countries, accessibility is a right protected by law, so you would literally be committing a crime if you do not uh, think about accessibility. Um, so, uh, at the last, we have this uh, resource. So this is a very cool resource by allyproject.com. So it is a checklist of uh, accessibility uh, guidelines. So once you are done designing or one, while you are designing, you can go through it and uh, check for things you might have missed, things you can include or do in your design to make it much more accessible. Yeah, that was it. Thank you.